Hey there boys and girls, Lucky here and welcome back to another CSGO video, bringing you guys another episode of Noob to Pro, the series that should help you get better at Counter-Strike Low Defensive. Today we're talking about different grip styles, their benefits, the pros and cons and all of that good stuff. Now as you all know, Noob to Pro is a two-part series, meaning on Mondays you always get big tutorial videos like this one or guides, and on Tuesdays I'll be streaming and you can ask me additional questions and I'll do some live teaching. Keep in mind this is the previous to last episode, the next one will be the last, so if you got any more questions, leave them down in the comment section below for next episode. Alrighty, so before we talk more about our different grip styles and the conclusion, I want to talk about EDPI and sensitivity first. So if you haven't already found your perfect sensitivity, go to my YouTube channel, go to the guide section, and then check out my how to find your perfect sensitivity guide in order to, well, find your perfect sensitivity. I have lots of additional info in there, but the last part essentially is just a guide that you can follow in order to find your sense. And keep in mind, there is no perfect sense. So just in general, you, you always have some sort of a trade-off if you're going to be lower or higher, being more accurate and like less mobile and stuff like that. That's just how it is. You just want to kind of be approximately or as good as, as as close as possible to your perfect sensitivity, but there really is no all-around perfect sensitivity for every situation. So, now let's talk about EDPI, since this is also very important, many people always ask me about that. EDPI is essentially when you take the DPI of your mouse, for example right here, this is a Zowie EC2A, and it's set to, as indicated by the blue light, to 1600 dpi. Now if we go in-game and to the options menu and then we click right here, keyboard and mouse, you can see my zoom sensitivity for the mouse is 0.62. Now what you have to do in order to find out your eDPI is you take the dpi of your mouse right here and you take the, once again, not the community servers, but right here, the in-game sensitivity and you multiply them. So you have 0.62 times 1600. So mine is close to, I think, 992 or something like that. And essentially your eDPI, so the result that you have, should be somewhere between 500, like this would be 500, and this would be 1500. This is usually like a good range for CS, just the way it is built, because you usually don't have ADS and you have to shoot from the hip and stuff like that, but you wanna also be able to move around and look. So this is 500 eDPI, this is 1500 EDPI. EDPI. And you wanna be in between right here. So in my case, I'm probably somewhere around right here. I'm a little bit of average, I'm more towards the higher side, but I'm still accurate enough so that I can like fire shots at long range and control my spray and stuff like that. So that's the first thing that you really wanna, well, know in order to get better with that. So find out your f perfect sensitivity first, then we're gonna talk about uh, having the, the EDPI somewhere between 500 and 1500. However, there are pros that are even lower at 300 something, or I think Guardian is at like 400-ish, something like that. Very low, very low, or 600. And there are also players that have like 2k eDPI. But preferably you want to stay between 500 and 1500 if you really want to get the what works for the majority. And usually you are part of the majority, so they're sad. Alrighty, so since we got that out of the way, we can now talk about our different grip styles. So as you already might have guessed, I'm a palm grip user. So what this means is, again, right here we have the mouse. What I'm doing is I'm laying my, or resting my palm right here on the back of my mouse like this. And then I'm putting my fingers all around it. So my hand is completely covering it. I basically have contact points across my whole hand right here. So there's actually no point in my hand or my mouse that is not being touched, so it's essentially like it's being glued or stuck to my hand. Now, palm grip is usually the most known kind of grip style which the majority of people are using and the, the main reason for that is that it is very consistent as well as uh, very comfortable for the majority of, of players. Now, the thing with palm grip is that when you're using it, you have essentially two kind of joint points. You, you got your arm movement like this and you also got your your wrist movement like that. There's no other movement, you got those two. Well, you could theoretically say like your shoulder like that, but that doesn't really count. I mean, you do use it a little bit, but for the majority, it's just your, your forearm, as well as right here, your hand or wrist. So whenever you're aiming or just firing, you're essentially using both of them at the same time, obviously. And again, the arm is for like the, the major movements, like looking around. And then for smaller adjustments like aiming and recoil control, that's basically where your hand or your wrist comes into play. 
So the, the benefits of palm grab, as I said before, is that it's very consistent since you do not have many points like where you can mess up. You only get your wrist right here for fine aiming and for like the rough aiming you got your arm right here. And also it doesn't really require lots of dexterity in order to use it properly and it's also not very fatiguing. So essentially all around it's a very simple grip that doesn't offer like too many gimmicky things or special things that would help you in certain scenarios. Overall it's just like a very good basic grip and that's why so many people are actually using it. So if you're a palm grip user you are probably good to go but of course there are other options so let's talk about them as well. Alrighty, so now let's talk about claw grip. So you can see I'm still in palm grip right here. Now, a claw grip is essentially a kind of hybrid grip between a fingertip and a palm grip. You're still resting your palm at the back of your mouse right here. However, this time around you're not kind of firmly snug in it like that. You're essentially lifting up your fingers like that. Hence like making some sort of a claw, like a spider, kind of like, like that. So, a, a common example for that would be, I think, Scream is actually using a claw grip. And this right here, the claw grip, is kind of a, a mix, as I said before, in between, like a hybrid gr uh, grip, actually. Now, you're still having your palm resting right here on the back of the mouse, and you're essentially still grabbing it right here with those fingers on the side. And you're only using these two fingers this time around to actually press the mouse. I mean, previously it's kind of the same, but you kind of have them angled up. So the theory behind claw grip is actually that you're able to push and press the mouse buttons faster. Meaning like with a palm grip, it takes you a little bit longer since you kind of start pressing right here with the back of your finger. While with a claw grip, you're actually just using like the, the, the last part of the finger joint right there. So that's essentially what it is supposed to be. Now again, you're kind of having the same things right here. You're still having your arm for the, the rough movements to look around and you're having your hand or your wrist for the smaller movements. However, due to not having it completely glued onto your hand, you're getting a little bit more of, um, I, I don't want to say versatility, but a little bit more freedom, you could say. So essentially you're playing it still the same. And due to that, again, presumably faster firing time, you're gaining somewhat of a little bit of a better um, Reaction time for trigger control, it's kind of hard to explain if you haven't tried it out. However, the claw grip also has some downsides to it. Of course, you kind of get like the little pro of you might be able to shoot faster. And also, of course, since you're kind of in a more... I don't want to say stress, because it really is not stress. Like, all grips should be very comfortable to hold. But more of a, in, a, in a ready position with your hand, you're, again, theoretically be able to do that a lot better. Now, the downside for the, the claw grip is, once again, that Having your arm and like or your wrist angled up like that is actually putting a lot more strain on it and a lot more stress Meaning that when you're using a claw grip like that You're actually going to fatigue sooner and it also requires you to have a little bit more of a better dexterity With your two fingers right here in order to use it properly So again, it's it's pretty much the same as the, the palm grip for the most part you have a minor like prone con trade-off right there so if you're a palm grip user and you want to try it out, you can do it, but once again, make sure the grip is comfortable. That's the most important thing. If a grip is not comfortable, you should never use it. Alrighty, so you can see I'm still in the palm grip right here since that's just, well, my, my normal usual grip. Anyhow, the last grip is a fingertip grip. Now essentially, instead of having our palm right here rest on the mouse, this time around, we're not touching it right here at all. So essentially the name comes from, again, fingertip grip because you're only holding it with your fingers right here. So you can see the mouse is actually not touching my hand at all. Now the benefit to this is that this time around instead of only having two parts that are moving or can move in order to get your aiming down, you got your arm for your like rough movements. And then you got your, essentially your um, wrist right here for the finer movements, the medium movements, controlling recall and stuff like that. And then you get an additional one, and that is your fingers. Of course, the fingers, they are very, like, they have a high dexterity, like... And if you're using a fingertip grip like that, you can not only use this and that, but also like this right here. You can shift the mouse with your fingers slightly, making smaller adjustments, and especially if you're playing lots from, for example, right up here, vertical positions where you're gonna aim down, you always have a problem right here that you... If you're a palm or claw grip user, you kind of rely on the flex of your arm, otherwise you have to take in your shoulder and do that. 
With a fingertip grip, however, you can cover like a lot more with the distance like that. However, the fingertip grip also again has some downsides once again. Of course, you, you kind of get like an art joint to get more like uh, more possibilities to correct your aim, to be more precise. However, it is a lot more inconsistent due to having like another pair of, of well fingers, like another joint added that can be moving and actually is adjusting the, the place of the crosshair. And it also requires you to be a lot more, or better said, to have a, a lot better dexterity with your fingers in order to be actually able to pull it off. This makes the grip probably the most inconsistent, especially if you have not trained with it. So I usually say if you're a palm grip user or a claw grip user, like right here or right here, you can easily switch between them or make a transition since they're fairly the same. However, the fingertip is actually something entirely different and only like I think 8% of the players, something like that, like ridiculously low, are actually using the fingertip grip. So this just goes to show that like it's very hard to actually use it. You can see that I'm not used to it, so my aim is kind of off right there. Again, if I would be using my normal palm grip, I'm a lot more accurate. And again, that's really what it comes down to. And yeah, fingertip grip, you got this movement, you got the wrist movement, and you got the finger movement as well. So you got the flex, as well as the this aiming, so you can just cover a lot more distance. But again, requires a lot more dexterity, and is probably a lot more inconsistent for the majority of players. Okay, so now let's move on to our conclusion. Alrighty, so it's conclusion time. Once again, I want to say the most important thing about finding your perfect grip style is actually having the most comfortable grip style. When you're forcing yourself to use something, for example, you're a palm grip user and you're trying, you're forcing yourself with a fingertip grip, you're probably not going to have much success, as you can see right here. I'm just not used to it. Of course, after some time training with them, you will get better, but you should always kind of default to the grip that is most natural to you. There's no sense in actually forcing another grip onto you just because it has some benefits that you might like. Because even though all those grips are kind of like the, the palm grip, claw grip and the fingertip grip, they are good in different kind of scenarios, you can still compensate by changing your sensitivity to certain pace to accommodate for that. So again, a fingertip grip is usually like kind of a, a higher sense kind of or well that what it looks like then again a palm is kind of the lowest and I would say the claw is kind of in, be in between however this does not mean that a fingertip will have to use a high sensitivity however if you're a palm grip user and once again you're going closer to the 1500 eDPI you can better mimic the speed of a fingertip user. However, keep in mind, the fingertip will be more accurate. So if you're a fingertip user, having a lower sensitivity can actually once again help you to compensate for that. And that's what I talked about the, in the beginning a little bit. The grip style is kind of important. The most important thing is you want to have a grip style that is not fatiguing you. You want to have a grip style that is very comfortable for you, so you're not kind of cramping down on your mouse. You want to just hold it firmly, nicely and relaxed, so that you can play for a prolonged period of time and get your shots down, don't cramp your hands and stuff like that, don't strain your hands, don't stress them, stuff like that. So that's what you essentially want to have. And again, depending on what DPI or well, better said, EDPI or sensitivity you're using, you can accommodate for different grip styles. So it, it really comes down to personal preference. It's more important to first find out your perfect sensitivity, take a look at your grip, maybe try out the other ones, see how they feel, because many people like for example, if they're trying to ride a skateboard, like that's a skateboard, you, you either ride like regular like this or goofy like this. So left foot forward or right foot forward. So many people are just like telling them right from the get-go if they had like a bad trainer or a bad mentor. Yeah, just do like that. And maybe actually they would be like riding goofy instead of regular. So they did learn it like the wrong way. So it's definitely not a bad idea to try it out, see what works for you. And then based on that, you can just adjust your sensitivity or best it. Yeah, a little bit. Like, as I said before, sensitivity is never completely perfect. There's always some kind of flex to it, depending on the situation. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all for now. I hope you enjoyed the little video. Also, keep in mind, this will be the previous to last Noob2 Pro episode. So if you have any more questions about any topics for Noob2 Pro, a complete in-depth series about how to get started with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, leave them in the comment section down below and let me know, because the next episode will be the last. But yeah, I think that's much all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video, and let's go figure out.